Think about it. It's actually quite a logical step. If you had only one real friend in the world and everyone else treated you like absolute garbage, acted as if they'd be better off without you, and then one day your only real friend said, I'm leaving to chase my dreams, would you not want to go with them? What has this village done for Naruto that he should care what they think about him? To be frank, Naruto's obsession with becoming Hokage in the first place was just a completely spite-motivated dream. Not too unlike Sasuke who dreamed of justice. Naruto did as well, but only he wanted to go about it a different way. But what if Naruto wanted his own brand of justice and left with Sasuke? Well, I guess we'll never know, now will we? Unless... Welcome to the Amagi. Before we begin, only 25% of our viewers are subscribed, so if you're a fan of the video, please like and double check that you're subscribed, and with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Naruto laid on his bed, looking up at the ceiling. The ceiling fan was spinning slowly, and he gazed into it, through it, in a daze. His eyes slightly drooping, his mouth hanging open as if he were unconscious, yet he was. He was very conscious, just locked deeply away in the recesses of his own mind, thinking. The Chunin exams were an absolute disaster. The death of Hiruzen, the destruction of the village. He could never unsee Konohamaru's face when he was told that his grandfather was never coming home. He tried so desperately to delete that memory from his mind, but the human body doesn't work like that. We don't get to decide what we want to remember and what to forget. Naruto struggled with that dilemma day in and day out, attempting to forget and forgive the mistakes people had made regarding him, attempting to forget what Hiruzen had done, or better yet, the lack of things he had done. Naruto felt like absolute trash. As he stood over the grave of Hiruzen, he looked down into the hole at the urn and could not bring himself to cry. He tried, heavens help him, he tried, but the tears wouldn't come. Naruto wondered if it were possible that he could be too sad to cry, but no, that had nothing to do with it. It was lingering resentment. He didn't care about me, so why should I care about him, was a thought that ran through his mind. Naruto was appalled at such an intrusive thought. He had attempted to convince himself that it wasn't true as he consoled Konohamaru in his affectionate embrace, but it couldn't be more true. Naruto hated to admit it, but he just couldn't bring himself to care that much about Hiruzen's passing. Maybe Naruto was going to hell for that, but at the same time, Naruto had been in hell for every day of his life, and the only person who could alleviate that would simply watch from the sidelines. Yeah, there were a few good memories that Naruto held onto, and for those memories, Naruto put his heart into giving Konohamaru the kindness he deserved. But for every time Naruto woke up in an empty house, for every time he came home to tend to wounds he received without explanation from angry villagers, for times when Hiruzen's presence was absent on the hardest days of his life, for each of those, Naruto's face grew stoic. He was old, Naruto told himself. Old people die. How cringe. What a cringe statement. If not Orochimaru, then a heart attack, or maybe choking on his rice pudding. Naruto felt like a true damned soul for thinking so heartlessly, but at the same time he came to his senses as he realized that he was giving off a goofy grin while staring at the ceiling. Naruto sat forward, his hand on his jaw, his thumb and index finger measuring the degrees of his smile, only for that smile to slowly become a disgusted scowl. I hate myself for thinking like this, Naruto thought within himself, but then he was answered by himself his own dark counterpart within his head. No, you hate Hiruzen, and you have every right to. He didn't care about you. Naruto shook his head. No, I loved Mr. Hiruzen. You hated him. No, Naruto said out loud. I loved him. You hated him. Naruto threw the flower vase on the nightstand beside his bed at the wall. Shut up. I loved him. I would have died for him. From behind Naruto, the shadow of his inner self appeared his eyes red and glowing in the darkness, his skin a darker shade of gray than the light beige Naruto normally possessed, his blonde hair now not much different from the color silver. Don't deny it, the shadow said. Hiruzen didn't care. Nobody cares about you. You have no obligation to care for anyone. Naruto thought back. No one person loves me. Jiraiya. Naruto thought back to Jiraiya, how he would train him for a month, how he took him to recruit Tsunade, how he helped him fight Orochimaru. Orochimaru. That man was the cause of all of Naruto's suffering right now. He's not, the shadow said. Orochimaru hasn't done a thing to hurt you. If anything, you're pleased with what he's done. Why don't you shut up? Why don't you leave me alone, Naruto shouted at his shadow, likely raising the alarm of his neighbors who probably wondered what that damn fool fox was doing in the room above. But the shadow came up from behind him to give Naruto a bit of a hug. I'm simply speaking what's on your heart, the heart you're burying. 
the heart you're trying to force to be quiet. You won't admit it, you're hurt. You're really hurt right now, and the pain started long before Orochimaru's attack. You hate to admit this, but Orochimaru's attack somehow brought you peace. You feel the form of justice. Naruto would turn over in bed and close his eyes. He would cover his head with a pillow. Be gone, I don't need to hear your lies. The shadow lingered a bit longer. Cover your head if you will, but I remain inside you. I am you. Sooner or later, you'll heed my words. And with that, Naruto was left in silence. As the night passed, Sasuke was at home resting, having only freshly gotten out of the hospital. As he sat in his home, he could only think about how Naruto had fought with him. He kept seeing that water tower. Sasuke had punctured it with his Chidori. Naruto had blown a hole clean through with his Rasengan. Naruto. Naruto of all people had surpassed his power. That was an insult. A spit in his face. Sasuke possessed so much potential, and he worked so hard all the time to grow stronger. Naruto, the class clown, he BS'd his way into power. He literally sneezed his way into power. So what? So what? Was Sasuke's entire life a lie? Was his every attempt to grow stronger just a lie? Was there any worth to anything he'd done? If he could be surpassed so easily by the likes of Naruto, then what hope was there to catch up with Itachi? There was none. Not at this rate. Not in this village. Just then, the Sound 4 entered his apartment. He hadn't heard them. He hadn't even sensed them until they spoke. Poor Sasuke. All he's ever wanted was strength, and yet even Naruto surpasses him. It's comical, really. Tragic. Sasuke sits up, pulling three shuriken from the pouch he kept below his pillow, throwing them at the Sound 4, each one dodging as if the shuriken weren't really moving at all. Really? Was that really your best? One of the voices said. Cut him some slack. He looks sweepy, came a female voice in a mocking tone. Sasuke stood and pulled a kunai and rushed at the girl who brought up her flute casually with such speed that it made Sasuke feel like he was moving in slow motion. She began to play it and Sasuke lost control of his motor functions before face planting into the nearby wall. One of the boys approached him and sat him up against the wall. He knelt down to be at Sasuke's height. Frankly, I don't see what Orochimaru sees in you. You're so weak, but who am I to doubt my master? Maybe you could be strong too, if you were smarter that is. Sasuke struggled to move, as if wanting to attack the boy for being so brutally honest. The boy pointed to a mark on his neck. You have this, just like us, but you never use it. You refuse to use it. It's pathetic. You cry about your weakness, yet refuse to use the power you've been given. You could be so much more with this power, and it goes so much deeper than you think. Sasuke grunted as he attempted to move and attack his adversary again, though he couldn't. The boy rolled his eyes. Why do you refuse our master? Is it out of loyalty for this village? Why does that matter to you? Is this village going to help you solve your problems? Is it going to help you accomplish your dreams? Your dreams are yours and yours alone to accomplish. Do not be weighed down by your loyalties, by these forged bonds that have attempted to connect you to something that would so easily throw you away when it's beneficial. Hell, I'm not even asking you to be loyal to Orochimaru. I'm asking you to become strong. If you want something, then go after it, regardless of the consequences. Or do you truly not wish to avenge your clan? Sasuke mustered the strength to spit in the boy's face. The boy closed his eyes, grit his teeth, and wiped away the saliva now covering his face. He pressed Sasuke's head to the wall. You should feel very, very ashamed right now. So ashamed that I've not even deigned you worthy to kill. You're just not worth the effort of ending your life. You're a fly to me, a worm, a speck of dust. You are nothing. As he said these things, memories of Itachi flashed through Sasuke's mind. The same thing. Itachi had told him the same thing. He groaned and struggled to move. The boy looked at Sasuke and scoffed. What's this? Are you crying? Did I make little baby sad? Then do something about it. Make something of yourself. Or have you forgotten what you've lived your life for up until this moment? The boy stood and returned to his team's side. We'll be waiting outside until daybreak. If you decide to actually make something of yourself, come find us. Otherwise, we're leaving you here to rot in your squalor. They then disappeared. As they did, the genjutsu that left his body paralyzed was released and he could move again. He sat forward and clenched his hands to make sure that he was truly free. Then he smashed the wall with his fist, leaving a crater in the wall the shape of his hand. Damn it, he said as he realized just how weak he was. Damn it, he shouted as he realized just how far he was from his dream. Damn it, he screamed as he realized just how humiliating it was to work so hard and get nowhere. As he laid his head back, he finally decided that maybe it was time to sever these connections. Maybe it was time to fully prioritize his strength. The next day, Naruto was informed of what had happened. Sasuke had left the village to join Orochimaru, and currently there is a team forming to find him. Naruto, of course, would join that team. The Sasuke Recovery Team. 
Naruto would join where he'd be informed about what happened and where Sakura would beg him to bring Sasuke home. Naruto would promise her and then the team would go off. As they continued on, they found the sound four and each time they grew close, a member would peel off to face them, with a member of the recovery mission breaking off to fight back. They would continue to run until Sasuke, coming out of his container, would begin to flee on his own. Naruto would chase him, only to be stopped by Kimimaro. But Naruto would be rescued by Rock Lee and eventually Gara, letting him continue to chase Sasuke further. Naruto chased Sasuke to the Valley of the End. Wait, Sasuke, just, just wait. Sasuke stopped and turned around. What is it? Naruto stood there panting, attempting to catch his breath. What are you doing? He said as he continued to breathe, his lungs burning from working overdrive just to catch up. Sasuke looked away from Naruto. I'm leaving the village, Naruto. Silence ensued for a few moments. Naruto then spoke. But why? Why are you leaving the village? Because I'll never grow stronger that way, Naruto. I'll never grow stronger if I stay there. What about me? Naruto asked. You're the reason I'm leaving, Naruto, Sasuke said. That struck Naruto like a truck. You're, you're leaving because of me? What did I do? You're saying you don't want to be my friend anymore? Sasuke didn't look back at Naruto. I'm leaving because you showed me a problem. A problem in myself. I've not been paying attention to myself and my needs. I've been neglecting my dream, and if I don't buckle down, I'll never complete it. Naruto listened to him. But aren't we friends? Sasuke's shoulders lowered. To a point, Sasuke didn't realize he'd been so stiff and pent up. I never said that, Naruto. I never said that we weren't still friends. But sometimes, paths diverge. Even if we really like someone, it doesn't mean that we're destined to be with them all of our lives. Destiny's river keeps flowing. This valley is a demonstration of that. Naruto looked around the valley, the two statues that they stood on top of, and the water flowing beneath them. Sasuke continued, Hashirama Senju and Madara Uchiha were best friends, just like us, but their needs and desires led them apart. They killed each other, Sasuke. Sasuke thought about it. Fate willed it. Naruto stood there, just looking at him. Water dripped from his cheek. He couldn't tell if that was the spray of the waterfall between the two statues, or if it was tears from his own breaking heart. Their paths, desires, and motivations. Hashirama Senju and Madara Uchiha both had different life paths, and even though they were friends, they needed to fulfill their responsibilities to themselves. There was no hatred between them, only the duties they held to themselves and their dreams. And that pit them against each other. Sasuke finally turned to look at Naruto. Naruto, my dream is to avenge my clan, and to rebuild it. Go back to the village. Tell Sakura that someday I'll come back for her, and she and I will fulfill our dreams together. But for now, she needs to let me go. Have faith in me. And what of my dreams? Naruto asked. Are your dreams not to become Hokage? Sasuke asked. If so, then you should return to the village. Continue to grow stronger under our sensei and then take your rightful place. Naruto shook his head. No! Sasuke was confused. What? Why not? Naruto began to cry. Because the only reason that I wanted to be Hokage in the first place was to be recognized, to be treated kindly and loved. I never had that, Sasuke. I know I don't know the pain of you having lost everything you cared about, but I have my own brand of suffering in never having known love in the first place. I'm alone, Sasuke. Sasuke stood and listened to him. When Naruto reached a long span of silence, Sasuke spoke. Then what is your dream, Naruto? Naruto heaved and whimpered, rubbing the tears from his eyes. I just want someone to be happy I'm in their life. Sasuke was stunned by how starved of affection Naruto truly was in so much that he would base his entire life plan around finding that thing that most people were born with. A moment passed as the rushing water carried away any possible animosity between them. Sasuke leapt from the statue of Madara to the statue of Hashirama, where he embraced Naruto tightly. I'm glad you're in my life, Naruto, he said to him. Naruto wrapped his arms around him as well. Please, don't leave me, Sasuke. The people of the village hate me. You're the only one who's ever understood me, who's ever cared for me in any meaningful way. You see past the things I can't help, and you treat me not as a demon, not as a nuisance, but as a person. As a person with feelings and struggles. You treat me like a brother, and I can't let that go. I'm not ready to let that go. Who said you had to let that go, Sasuke asked. Who told you that you needed to let it go? Naruto shook his head. How can we continue if you leave? Without you in the village, I don't know what to fight for anymore. Am I fighting for the respect of people who hate me? Can I ever truly be respected? Can I ever have a fair shake at becoming Hokage? I just want my friends. I don't want the bonds we forged to be cast aside. I don't want to lose that. Sasuke held Naruto close. Naruto, what are you saying? Naruto was silent for a moment. What I'm saying is, take me with you. Sasuke was surprised. Take you with me? He thought about it for a moment. I don't know if that's such a good idea, Naruto. 
Orochimaru isn't the kind of person to just take in strays. He needs a reason to have you around, it's give and take. You gotta have something to give if you want something in return, that's how it works. Naruto began scrambling to find something. I, I have a tailed beast! Sasuke cocked his head. So you're going to offer to be a weapon for Orochimaru. Well, what are you offering him, Naruto asked. The only thing he wants, my body. But you can't! How will you ever complete your dreams if you let him take over your existence? I said I was offering him my body, never that I planned to give it to him, Sasuke chuckled. But that's a dangerous game, Sasuke. It's risky. There can be no reward unless there's risk. I'm gonna try and swindle him. I'm banking on my ability to grow, hoping it surpasses his expectations and allows me to overcome him when the time is right. Naruto listened to him. I'm willing to come too. I just don't want to lose my friend. I want to support you and your dream. Sasuke smiles. If you're absolutely certain, then you can follow me. Naruto nodded and began to follow Sasuke off. He slowly had some reservations the further they went. He was becoming a rogue shinobi. And what would Sakura think of this? Jiraiya. He did have people who cared about him. Was he betraying them? It hurt to think about, but at the same time, he pushed it from his mind. As they reached the border of Otogakure, Sasuke stopped him. All right, Naruto, this is Orochimaru's hideout. This is your last chance to go back to Konoha. If you don't, you'll be branded a rogue shinobi too. You've not betrayed the village yet, but if you cross this border, there'll be no going back. Are you sure about this? Naruto looked down at the entrance, a small border at the gate. He then looked to Sasuke. He gave a weak smile and stepped over the border. Sasuke took a deep breath. He turned around and began to walk off with Naruto. He led them toward the location where Orochimaru might be. Upon entering the facility, they had to give up most of their weapons and items. Moving deeper, they'd find Orochimaru sitting in a chair, a new body having been recently taken. In doing so, he seemed to have restored function to his arms. Welcome, Sasuke, he said with a voice all too familiar. And I see you've brought a friend. Sasuke looked over. This is Naruto. He's my friend, and he decided to leave the village with me. Orochimaru sat forward. No need for introduction, Sasuke. I know him. We've met on many occasions, actually. What is it that you hope to gain, Naruto? What is it that I can provide for you? Naruto thought about it. It's not as complicated as that. Sasuke's my friend, and I have painfully few of those. I followed him here because I want to keep cultivating our friendship. I'm not ready to let go. Orochimaru nodded. Friendship. Loyalty. How refreshing. In the shinobi world, loyalty to one's village is the most important aspect. But sadly, the village is rarely as loyal to its shinobi as they are to it. To see a shinobi loyal to a friend instead of the village is a beautiful sight. But all in all, I don't allow you to stay here rent free. Surely you have something to offer me. Naruto nodded. I have a tailed beast. I can use it to help you. Orochimaru sat back. He thought about it. It was then that Kabuto appeared. He whispered something into Orochimaru's ear. Orochimaru would think about it for a moment before looking to them both. Would you both submit to a physical examination? Sasuke was confused. For what reason? To ensure I'm getting bang for my buck. I recall pouring many resources into Kimimaro, making him the strongest of my shinobi, only to realize far too late that his illness had entered a terminal stage. I do not wish to make the same mistake twice. So please submit to a physical examination and I'll decide whether to accept you into my village or not. Sasuke was a little confused, but he didn't fight against it. He submitted to the physical as did Naruto. The two would be examined to see what their physical health was and would have blood drawn from them for testing. Enough that they came close to passing out. But after a little rest and a little something to put a pep in their step, they were up and moving once again. Orochimaru would then summon them to his office. There, Orochimaru would tell them that he would accept them both under his tutelage and would train them both to reach the highest echelons of power. Enough for Sasuke to get revenge on his brother, and enough for Naruto to get revenge on the leaf. Both graciously accepted, and from here, the two would begin their training. Kabuto would bring them to their own private headquarters where they could rest if they wanted to. After all, it had been a trying day and they were likely in need of a nap. And so the two settled in for the night. As Sasuke lay in his bed, he looked over to the other side of the room, at Naruto's bed as he also got settled in. Well, what do you think, Naruto? You're not gonna panic, are you? Naruto shook his head. No. I have my friend. If I feel bad in any way, it's that I left behind Sakura, Kakashi, and Jiraiya-sensei. But other than that, I'm fine. And as you said, we will go back one day. Sasuke nodded. We will, but we need to get stronger. Naruto and Sasuke would then proceed to fall asleep. Elsewhere, Orochimaru and Kabuto were talking. Are you certain of the findings? Orochimaru asked. Kabuto nodded. Yes, they seem to have a near match, but not completely. Each one separately possesses half. It may be possible to synthesize with them together. 
Orochimaru smiled. Make it so then. Begin running experiments. Kabuto obliged. Orochimaru sat back and contemplated the luck he had fallen into. This was so much better than he could have ever expected. This was better than just the Sharingan alone. He was going to become the most powerful shinobi to ever exist. That was the simple fact. Soon, he would be out of death's reach, and he'd be able to learn everything there was to learn without restriction. Day in and day out, Naruto and Sasuke trained. Without end, they trained, growing stronger, taking various forms of performance-enhancing substances as provided by Orochimaru. Despite this, Sasuke got the strange feeling like Orochimaru was holding out on him. Sasuke still had his curse mark, and Naruto was still working on controlling his tailed beast. He had mastered what Orochimaru had called his version 1 cloak, but his version 2 was still well out of reach. Naruto, Sasuke said one day when they were alone after training. Naruto looked to him. What is it? Sasuke looked around. Do you get the distinct feeling that Orochimaru's holding out on us? What do you mean? Naruto asked. What I mean is, do you not feel that maybe Orochimaru doesn't want us growing too strong because he's afraid of how far we'll go? That maybe we'll get too powerful? Naruto shrugged. Now that you mention it, it seems like the training has gotten too easy. But then again, it's not like I didn't expect such a thing. I knew it would come to this. You did, Sasuke asked. Naruto looked to him as if he couldn't believe that Sasuke was asking this. I told you when we first got here all those years ago that he wouldn't let us overtake him. Orochimaru isn't honest, and he's not doing this for anyone but himself. He needs you to need him, or else all his power goes away. The moment we stop needing him, he loses us. And he knows that. And we know that. So the training we're doing now is inconsequential. We're no longer in need of his training because he'll never let us go past where we are now. We've plateaued. Now is the time to leave. Sasuke thought about it. Do you think we could beat him if we tried? Naruto thought about it. I don't know. Are you planning that? Do you really want to try to eliminate him when we leave? Sasuke nodded. Yes, we're rogue shinobi. Konoha probably has a bounty on our heads. But if we deliver a head that's even higher in the bingo book to them, they may overlook our indiscretions. I say that for you, you bring Orochimaru's head, and for me, I bring Itachi's. Then we can return to Konoha together, and likely be forgiven for our desertion. Call it a long game. We would have people in the village who stand up for us, so more than likely we can play this off as an attempt to assassinate the two highest criminals on Konoha's hit list. Naruto nodded in understanding. Then we should do some more training. We should train together and push each other to go even further. Then maybe we can handle Orochimaru. Sounds like a plan, Sasuke said. Let's get to work. The two of them would work even harder while training. Eventually, Orochimaru would send them on a mission to deliver research materials to one of his facilities. Naruto and Sasuke would meet Karin there. Naruto was surprised to see her for the first time. Wait, Karin Uzumaki? Sasuke looked to Naruto. Do you know her? Naruto shook his head. No, but she's an Uzumaki, a member of my clan, a dead clan. Shock drew across Karin's face. Wait, your name is Naruto Uzumaki? She asked. He nodded. While these two were shocked by the relation to each other that they had, Sasuke snuck off to investigate. He was originally here only to deliver materials, but he was taking this extra time to search for allies to use against Itachi. It was then that he learned of Suigetsu and Jugo. He began to wonder just how powerful these two could make him. They would make good allies, but just to be sure, how about a test? Sasuke would free Suigetsu from prison, and together with Naruto and Karin, Sasuke would attempt to recapture Suigetsu. During this time, Sasuke grew fairly impressed by Suigetsu's abilities. They would then defeat him and have him locked away again, but Sasuke was now feeling that he had some ideas to make him a good ally. And so, Naruto and Sasuke would return to Orochimaru to report on everything that had happened, which would make Orochimaru pleased. He would dismiss them. Naruto and Sasuke would then take to their rooms, where they would pretend to rest. Is today the day? Naruto asked. Sasuke nodded. Today is the day. I feel we've grown strong enough, and Orochimaru seems to be in that awkward stage between bodies. He will attempt to take mine soon, but for now, he's weakened. I say we strike now. And so, together, the two of them would make their way to Orochimaru's bedroom where he was resting. They were fully willing to go full Darth Plagueis on the guy. As they came into the room in an attempt to strike Orochimaru from a distance, they would just barely be able to dodge an attack as well. They were shocked. Orochimaru stood there and popped his neck a little and looked at them with a touch of pride on his face. Around Orochimaru, eight black orbs floated. It was a technique that Sasuke and Naruto had never seen before. Orochimaru spoke. How pathetic. You truly believed you could assassinate me. You didn't think I'd hear you two conspiring against me behind my back. I have eyes and ears everywhere. But that's okay. I got what I wanted out of it. I thought you wanted my body, Sasuke said. Orochimaru smiled. Don't worry, I still do. But I got what I planned for the longest time. Six Paths Chakra. Naruto was confused. What? 
Orochimaru elaborated. The Sage of Six Paths possessed a chakra type unseen before, or ever seen since. One of the more elusive abilities. But strangely, when I had you two perform a physical, I discovered that your two chakras, when mixed together, could form Six Paths Chakra. So I began to produce as much of it as possible from your many tests over the years. And because of that, I have gained true Six Paths Sage Mode. Sasuke looked to Naruto, who looked to Sasuke as well. Neither were sure they were quite ready for this, but there was no turning back now. They rushed forward to strike Orochimaru, but Orochimaru would push them both back with his Truth Seeker orbs. As Naruto and Sasuke would fly back, Orochimaru went on the offensive and began to rush them, turning one of his orbs into a spear to strike them with. I will take your body, Sasuke, and when your body mixes with my Six Paths Chakra, I'll progress even more than this. I'll possess more than just a simple Sharingan. I'll possess the Sage's own Rinnegan. Sasuke jumped over the staff swipes as Naruto came in from behind in his version 1 cloak. Sasuke entered his stage 2 curse mark form to aid Naruto. The two of them attempted to coordinate an attack on Orochimaru, but Orochimaru ruined their combo by covering himself in a single massive Truth Seeker orb, using it like a shield. Orochimaru would knock Sasuke away and throw his staff at Naruto, piercing his stomach and pinning him to the wall. Sasuke saw this. No, Naruto! Sasuke roared as his Sharingan mutated into a Mangekyo Sharingan. He would rush Orochimaru once again, this time supplementing his attacks with Susano and Amaterasu. However, as Orochimaru held out his hand, he would catch the Susano and would use the Predapath to absorb the Amaterasu and Susano armor. He would then knock him away. Sasuke would stand and look to his left to see Naruto still there. He would remove the spear from Naruto's gut and would help him stand. Naruto, can you hear me? Naruto would look to him weakly. Sasuke would speak again. I'm sorry I got us into this, Naruto. We should have stayed in Konoha. Naruto would then take Sasuke's hand. What? What is it? Sasuke would ask. Naruto would speak. Six Paths Chakra. Sasuke would nod. Yeah, Orochimaru has Six Paths Chakra. No, you'd need Six Paths Chakra. Naruto began funneling his chakra into Sasuke, knowing that he was their only chance now. As he did this, Sasuke felt a powerful change in himself. As he and Naruto's chakra mixed, he didn't understand it at all. He didn't understand what had caused this or why he and Naruto's chakra could make Six Paths Chakra, but it could. After the chakra mixed, Sasuke's Sharingan evolved into Rinnegan. Orochimaru grew frustrated. No, those eyes are mine. I will have them. Orochimaru took his true form, preparing to absorb Sasuke. He would slither forward, firing his truth-seeking orbs at Sasuke. Sasuke would knock them to the side with his blade. He would then use the Diva Path to push Orochimaru away. Orochimaru would attempt to use Firestyle Ninjutsu to breathe fire at Sasuke, but Sasuke would raise his hand to absorb it. He would then rush forward. Orochimaru would attempt to spit paralyzing poison at Sasuke, but he would dodge it with the extra reaction time his new Rinnegan gave him. He would then jump and sever the beast in two. And in that moment, the battle was over. Sasuke would sheathe his blade and turn back to Naruto. He would rush over to check if he was okay. He was bleeding pretty badly and was weak. I won't let you die, Sasuke said as he pressed his hand in Naruto's stomach to heal the wound. He would use his yin-yang release, creation of all things technique to restore Naruto's flesh and blood, and then would transfer some of his chakra to help revive Naruto. Naruto's eyes opened. Huh? Sasuke sighed with relief after having been afraid that he'd lost his friend. He would then hug him. I was so afraid. Naruto hugged him back. It's okay. I'm okay. Sasuke would look back at Orochimaru. We won't be alone for long. We need to get out of here. Can you walk? Naruto nodded and stood. Together, the two would make a quick escape into the night. Taking a moment to rest, Naruto looked at Sasuke and smiled. We did it. We killed Orochimaru. Sasuke nodded. That's half the targets we need to take out before we can return to Konoha. What do we do next? Naruto asked. Sasuke thought about it for a moment. First, we'll go recruit a small team. I'm thinking Karin, Suigetsu, and maybe that Jugo fellow. Then, after that, we'll track down our last target. Is it time to fulfill your dream, Sasuke? Sasuke nodded. Yes, it's time to fulfill my dream. It's time to kill Itachi. Naruto sat in a tree. He looked down upon the palm of his hand. He clenched it. Looking up, he thought about the things that had brought him to where he was now. He and Sasuke had decided to leave Konoha together. The reason for this was clear, cut and dry for Sasuke. He had dreams to fulfill that he could not fulfill while still in the leaf. But Naruto's reason for leaving was a bit more vague. In fact, the only dream Naruto could have was now likely ruined by leaving the village, so what was the logic? Sometimes Naruto wondered this too. The entire reason for being a shinobi, everything he had done, every time he had hyped himself up to work harder, it was all in service to his dream of becoming Hokage. 
but now such a thing was impossible. He could never become Hokage now. Well, more than likely not. Of course, Sasuke disagreed. You've killed Orochimaru, and I'll soon kill Itachi. We'll return home as heroes. They'll have to make you Hokage. This was what Sasuke said, but the point was, Naruto was not thinking about any of that when he left. His only motivation for leaving was because he wanted to be with the one person who actually seemed to care whatsoever about his life. Naruto was just sick of being in the village. Naruto left because he didn't want to stay. That was the only reason, and that left him feeling a little bad. No goal in life, nothing worth doing. All he was, all he could be, was a supporting character in someone else's story. Or so he felt. No true direction or goal, he continued to fight for someone else simply because he didn't want to be alone. Now that he thought about it, he figured out how lonely that sounded. How utterly, despairingly lonely. Looking down at his hand once again, he felt an immense power, unlike any he had ever felt before. The Ninetales. This new power was greater than that. This new ability far surpassed it. Raw strength. The primal strength of nature flowed through his veins and bolstered every muscle, every reaction, every ninjutsu, genjutsu, taijutsu technique. And even still, he had developed the same black orbs that Orochimaru had developed. He wasn't even entirely sure what they were or how he created them. They were just automatic. He had, on various occasions, attempted to examine them with the help of Karin. She had said that she sensed an unusual sort of chakra mixture. He trusted whatever she said on the matter due to her being a sensory type, but even she wasn't entirely sure what it was. She said she sensed every nature transformation at once, as well as a few other chakra types that she couldn't exactly pin down. Orochimaru had claimed that this was the power of the Sage of Six Paths, but Naruto wondered how it was that he could have such a thing, and furthermore, why the union of his and Sasuke's chakra would awaken it. Speaking of Sasuke, he too had an awakening. His eyes had evolved into a Mangekyo Sharingan, and they had evolved into a more mythical dojutsu thereafter, the Rinnegan. Sasuke was ecstatic about that. Itachi had once told him to face him when he had unlocked the Mangekyo Sharingan. Due to the inability to gain that, Sasuke had always felt as though he would never measure up, and would never be strong enough. In fact, that was partially why he left Konoha in general. But now? Now Sasuke had that power and greater. He finally felt as if he maybe had surpassed Itachi. The same eyes as the Sage of Six Paths, the same power as him. Both Naruto and Sasuke were meant for great things, so it had been said of them by Jugo in a passing comment. Now, at present, Naruto and Sasuke were on their way to find Itachi. Where he was remained a mystery. All they could do was check in the usual places, but to no avail. Sasuke had never imagined that out of all the things he had to do, this would be the hardest of all. He could work and make breakthroughs and grow stronger all he wanted, but it didn't mean a thing if he couldn't find his target. And only now was it truly setting in for the village boys how big the outside world truly was, and the vast openness that the walls of their hometown had been sheltering them from. But all the same, it was freeing, roaming without borders, without rules, all under the endless expanse of stars. There was beauty in this freedom, and now, as Naruto looked up at those stars from his perch in the trees, he began to wonder if maybe his decision to leave the village with Sasuke, the forsaking of his dreams, the forsaking of the village, had been worth more than the title of Hokage ever had been. After all, Naruto wanted the title to demand respect from those who hated him. But even if they respected him, they would never love him. It would all be a simple facade with animosity boiling under the surface. Not here, though. Among his friends, with Sasuke, Karin, Suigetsu, and Juko, Naruto had found respect, and he had found peace and freedom under these stars. The world was beautiful, and far less cruel a place as some had led him to believe. Certainly not when you had friends by your side. And right now, Naruto is feeling that peace as the drowsiness of night came upon him. As he hopped down to the ground, he found the others already asleep under the stars. Naruto was the last one awake. And so, this beauty of nature, it was all for him. It was beauty only he was looking at. And in that moment, it felt as if Naruto knew why he was alive. It was as if he knew why he had left Konoha. He wanted this, this beauty, this simplicity, the warm embrace of the sun, the cool chill of the night, the spray of the rivers and the breeze and the trees above. Even if it began to rain right now, Naruto felt as if it could not get any better. And so, he lay down in the grass himself, and also began to submit to the siren song of sleep. Closing his eyes, he drifted off, and began to dream of a place and time where everything felt okay. A time not too unlike this. The next day, Naruto awoke to the sound of stirring. He turned over for a moment to catch a few more Zs before he felt a foot kick his. Naruto, were you not keeping watch last night? 
Naruto opened his eyes. Oh, that's what I forgot to do, he thought within himself. Now he remembered why he was the last one awake. How could he forget such a thing? Sorry, Sasuke, I didn't mean to, I just sort of forgot. But hey, everything worked out well, right? Naruto sat up and saw the group standing there looking over Sasuke's shoulder. Sasuke held up a note. Things aren't all right. Someone was in our camp last night. They could have killed us if they wanted to, and we never would have known they were there. Naruto stood. I already said I'm sorry. It was an honest mistake. He dusted off his clothes and walked over. What's that? Sasuke read through it. His eyes seemed to widen with concern. It's a message. From Itachi. Naruto was surprised. Wait, Itachi was in our camp last night? Sasuke shrugged. Either Itachi or a messenger from him. He read over the letter. Naruto drew closer and read it for himself. What's it say? Sasuke looked at him. It's an invitation. An invitation? To what? Naruto asked. Sasuke got a bit of a smile on his face. It's an invitation to a final battle with him. The group began to make their way through the forest toward the location that had been dictated to them on the letter. It was a place that Sasuke would know about. It was an old Uchiha hideaway in the middle of nowhere. A place in the land of fire where nobody but they knew. It was designed to be a refuge for the clan should Konoha ever fall. A place they could stay until things died down and they could reform the leaf, or they could decide a new course of action. In truth, the place was never used after the Warring States period, but it had remained well kept just for such an occasion. Sasuke found it funny. This location symbolized both an end to old things and a beginning to new. This location was perfect for their final battle. Karin stopped them for a moment. Hold up. The group came to a stop and turned to face Karin. What is it? Sasuke asked. Karin closed her eyes and put her hand to the ground. I sense multiple chakra signatures. They're all coming this way. What? Naruto was surprised. I don't recognize them, but they're fanning out to search, it feels. Is it a trap? Sasuke asked. Did Itachi call in reinforcements? Karin thought for a moment. I don't know, but their movements suggest that they're looking for us. Sasuke nodded. Well, keep us informed. We still need to get to Itachi. Tell us if they get too close. Karin nodded. They continued. I will not have this chance slip away from me, he said as they continued to travel toward the location. As they did so, they would eventually make their way to the hideout. Sasuke would look up. This is the location. Naruto would drop his cloak on the ground and pop his knuckles. Let's get it done then. Sasuke would hold out his hand to stop Naruto. Naruto looked down at it for a moment before shifting his gaze up. What's this? Sasuke looked to him. You need to stay out here, Naruto. All of you do. What? Why? Naruto demanded to know. Sasuke then spoke. This is my fight. All I've done my whole life since the destruction of my clan was trained in preparation of this day. He told me I was not even good enough to kill. I need this Naruto. If I don't kill him alone, then I'll feel I didn't get my vengeance at all. I need to be the one to do it. Naruto waited for a moment. But from the stories you've told me, he's an absolute monster. There's no guarantee that even your Rinnegan can help you beat him. And if that's true, you could die. What are you going to do if he kills you? Sasuke looked back up at the building. If he kills me, then I simply wasn't strong enough and could never have beaten him. If I die, then I'll die with a smile, knowing he considered me worthy enough at least to be put to rest with the rest of my clan. That's a dark way to think, Karin said. Sasuke looked back with a smile. My entire life has led up to this moment. This is something I need to do, so please, give this to me, guys. Naruto looked around in frustration. What are we supposed to do then? You stay out here, Sasuke said. If anything, go buy me time to ensure nobody comes after us. No, I mean, what do we do if Itachi kills you? Sasuke shrugged. Do whatever you want to do. Run from him, fight him, kill him. I don't really care. I'll be too dead to stop you either way. But give me my first crack at him, at least. Naruto sighed. Fine. We'll give you first crack, but you better come back alive. Sasuke nodded. He left to enter the building. Naruto then turned away. Where are you going? Suigetsu asked. Naruto looked back over his shoulder. To buy us some time. He then jumped off into the trees. He hopped from limb to limb, cautiously keeping his eyes open, waiting for any clues to the location of whoever was tracking them. Naruto came to a perch in a tree that was well shaded. His dark cloak made him all the more hard to see. He kept his eyes open until he saw a cell from that group. Wait, is that Sakura and Kakashi-sensei? He jumped down to meet up with the group, a group of shinobi as well as his own former team. Naruto landed on a branch in front of them. At that moment, it was as if time had stopped. All was silent, even the forest creatures as these made contact for the first time in years. Naruto? Naruto turned back to look at them. He offered a slight smile. Hi guys. Kakashi was surprised to see him. Naruto? Sakura was silent for a moment. It certainly has been a long time, hasn't it? What's it been, three years? He asked them. Two and a half. Naruto could tell that the group was having a hard time believing it. If you need a moment, you could- Where have you been? Sakura cried out. Naruto was shocked by the outburst. I've been with Sasuke. Why did you leave? Sakura demanded to know. 
When you went out after Sasuke, you promised to bring him back, but all you did was leave too, she yelled at him as tears formed in her eyes. Why did you leave? I thought that you promised you'd bring him back to me. Are you a liar, Naruto? Did you lie? These tears began to roll down her cheek. Naruto looked down toward the ground, solemn look upon his face. I'm sorry I made you so upset, Sakura, but I haven't given up on that promise. Sasuke will come back to the village. We just have a few goals we need to accomplish before we can. There's a rumor that you two killed Orochimaru, Kakashi said. Is it true? Naruto looked up at Kakashi. It is indeed true. We killed him. We were planning to bring his head back to the village as a part of our mission. Mission, Kakashi claimed. What mission? Naruto smiled. Our mission, mine and Sasuke's. Sasuke needed to achieve his dream, but more than that, he wanted to bring back the heads of a few people on Konoha's bingo book. I know the mission wasn't regulated, so we may face insubordination for that, but we've killed Orochimaru in Konoha's name, and soon we'll kill Itachi as well. In fact, Sasuke's with him while we speak, doing battle with him. Kakashi was stunned. You two really killed Orochimaru, and Sasuke's killing Itachi right now? He might need our help, Sakura shouted. She attempted to jump past Naruto, but he caught her. Hold up, you can't. What? Why? Sakura demanded. Naruto began explaining. Because this is more than just a mission to Sasuke. It's more than just a need to do it for the village. Sasuke needs to kill Itachi for himself. If we take that from him, we'll have destroyed his dream. Please, just have faith in him. And after Itachi's dead, we'll return to the village. Kakashi thought about it for a moment. All right, fine. Would you like me to show you where Sasuke is? Please, Sakura begged. Naruto smiled. Okay, okay, just calm down. I'll take you, but you just gotta promise not to interfere, okay? Sasuke says that if he dies, we're free to move in on Itachi, but I don't expect Sasuke to lose. He's leagues above what he used to be now, and I don't think even Orochimaru would have a fair chance at him alone currently. The group agreed, and so Naruto led them to the hideout. Suigetsu, Jugo, and Karin were surprised when they showed up there. Naruto looked back at Kakashi and Sakura. These are mine and Sasuke's friends. Karin, Suigetsu, and Jugo. They've been helping us out. That being said, when this is all over, I want you to give them the freedom they deserve. Let them either come with us to the leaf or go their own way. Can you guys promise that? Kakashi nodded. If they helped you take out these threats, then they're owed a debt of gratitude from Konoha. They're free to do as they wish. Naruto smiled. Good. And so they waited. From above, there were the sounds of fighting. The sound of clanging metal, ninjutsu, explosions, susano. There were so many sounds ringing down from above, so loud one might mistake it for a full-blown war. It was like two armies were clashing on the roof of the hideout, but in reality, it was nothing more than two rogue shinobi going all out. The sound of two Susano fighting could be heard, and then silence. They waited, but there were no further noises. The battle must be over, Jugo said. They waited longer, but Sasuke did not appear. Anxiety began to build in the hearts of those waiting outside. Why isn't he coming out? Sakura asked. They could wait no longer. They rushed in. Something wasn't right. They made it to the roof and saw the destruction left behind, but they found nobody else. Fan out! Find them, Kakashi ordered. They began to search the area. That's when one of the shinobi called out. We found a body! Sakura's heart nearly stopped. She began walking over. The shinobi that found it was already examining it. Sakura saw it. Dark hair. No, 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 no! She ran over and flipped the body. It was Itachi. She let out a sigh of relief as tears began to run down her cheeks. Her smile corrupted into a crying clenching of teeth. Naruto came to her side and hugged her. It's okay. Sasuke won. He's still alive somewhere. But where? That's the question, Suigetsu said. Jugo looked over. Karin, can you sense Sasuke nearby? Karin began to attempt to sense him. I don't sense Sasuke at all. He's not anywhere near here. Where did he go? And why would he run? These were answers nobody knew. I don't understand, Naruto said. Why would he flee after the battle ended? Is it maybe because he saw us, Kakashi said. Is it that he wasn't ready to come back to the village? Naruto shook his head. No, Sasuke's told me his plan multiple times. We were going to use Orochimaru's training to get stronger, kill Orochimaru, and then find and kill Itachi, and then bring both of their heads back to Konoha for amnesty. His goals are complete. He could return to Konoha now. I don't see why he'd flee. Maybe someone took him, Karin said. Do you think someone could, Suigetsu asked? It's possible. After such a fight, there's no doubt that Sasuke would be tired, Jugo said. It's possible that someone capitalized off this to capture him, possibly to steal his Rinnegan. Naruto looked to Karin. Can you sense anyone here? Karin shook her head. Naruto looked back at the others. Kakashi then asked, Wait, did you say Rinnegan? We have a lot to talk about, Naruto said. And so Naruto, Sakura, and Kakashi all spoke together as Konoha Shinobi ventured out to search for Sasuke. By the end of it, they had yet to find him, and so they all began to return to Konoha without him. 
Returning to the village, Naruto would be brought before Tsunade, who would scold him for such a brash move. Naruto apologized and offered the fact that they had killed both Itachi and Orochimaru as some sort of excuse, but Tsunade refused this, saying that it was an unauthorized operation, insubordination, and desertion. She said that because they had done these things, they would eventually be pardoned for their crimes. However, that was not going to stop Naruto from spending some time in the brig for all the trouble they put them through. And so, Naruto was delivered to the prison where he was to wait. As he sat there in near darkness, only the light of a few torches lighting his dark cell, he would be brought something to eat by Konohamaru. Naruto would take it and look at the boy. Wow, Kono, you've grown so tall. Konohamaru nodded with a hint of depression in his expression. What's wrong? Konohamaru looked up. Do you know what happened after you left, Naruto? Naruto shook his head. What? Konohamaru then spoke. You took your tailed beast with you. The entire village was without protection for so long. Other nations were threatening war. It was only because we had Gara on our side and Suna that we managed to survive these threats. Gara's one tail was all that was protecting us. But a little while ago, Gara. Naruto sat forward. What? What is it? Konohamaru looked up. Gara was killed. Naruto was surprised. What? Konohamaru nodded to affirm that it was true. He continued. Some group called the Akatsuki took him and stole his tailed beast and killed him. Naruto looked down sorrowfully. That's not it either, Konohamaru said. Uncle Asuma died. Naruto was surprised. Konohamaru began to cry. Uncle Asuma was the last member of my family I had left after Grandpa Hiruzen died. And now Asuma's dead too. He was killed fighting the Akatsuki. Naruto came to the cell's doors on his knees and pushed his hands through the bars to comfort Konohamaru. He sniffled a little as he continued. I only survived that mess because I was on Team 7, Konohamaru said. Kakashi-sensei and Sakura-chan were there for me when he died. I thought I'd have Jiraiya there with me too. Konohamaru looked up. Big brother, Jiraiya taught me just like he taught you, he said with a smile hidden under tears. He taught me the Rasengan and even this cool thing called Sage Mode, but he had to go on mission to Amegakure. I wanted to go too, but Asuma had just died. I wasn't in the right shape to go, and because of that, because I wasn't there, the Akatsuki killed him too. Naruto is shocked. Pervy Sage is dead? Konohamaru's tears fell to the ground in large droplets. I'm losing everyone, Naruto. I can't keep doing this. I'd rather die than see anyone else go away, so please, please promise me you'll stay in the village. Konohamaru pressed against the cell doors as if attempting to get a hug through the bars. Naruto provided what he could. He was too shocked and upset at the death of Jiraiya, but he knew that he needed to be Konohamaru's comfort. I promise I'll stay. I'm back with the village for good, okay? We just need to find Sasuke and bring him home. We just need to bring him home. Naruto had been in his cell for days. He began to wonder if old lady Tsunade was ever going to pardon him. For all he knew, he'd be in this cell until they found Sasuke. If that were the case, it would make a lot of sense actually. They didn't want to risk Naruto leaving the village to find Sasuke. So no doubt they would keep him here until such a time as they brought Sasuke back. As he laid there, thinking upon these things, his cell shook as a loud rumble could be heard. What was that? Naruto said as he sat up. An earthquake? Suddenly there was a louder, harder shake that threatened to bring the whole ceiling down on him. He heard cries and clamoring from above. Naruto got up and ran to the cell door. What's going on? Hey, what's going on? No guards came to him. The cell shook again. Damn it, Naruto said. He stood back and began to form a Rasengan in his hand. The idea that this cell could hold him was laughable. He was here because Tsunade had wanted him to be, but now something more important was at stake. He began to charge at the door. Suddenly, the door opened up as Konohamaru unlocked it. Naruto slammed the brakes and stumbled, tripping over the boy. He sat up. Konohamaru, are you okay? The boy nodded as he rubbed his head. He pointed toward the stairs. Hurry up, get outside. Someone's attacking the village. Naruto ran up the stairs and stepped out into the light. He looked up and saw a man flying in the air. Naruto activated his six-path sage mode and flew into the air to meet him. The Jinchuriki, the man said. Naruto looked at him and noticed that he had a Rinnegan. Those eyes. His fists clenched. They're the same as Sasuke's. Naruto began to believe that this man had stolen Sasuke's eyes. How dare you? I'll kill you! And so, without even a word of explanation from pain, Naruto rushed into him, creating a bow staff out of a truth-seeking orb behind him, knocking him to the ground. Naruto landed. Pain rose. I don't know what foolishness you speak of. These eyes are mine and mine alone. They are now, always have been, and always will belong to me. He called his other six paths to him. Naruto looked around at the five people surrounding him. Good. Now maybe it'll be a fair fight, Naruto said as he created a staff in his other hand. Pain raised his hand and the rest of the six paths began to attack Naruto. Naruto saw them coming in, but he was well prepared. He struck each one with incredible skill and prowess. 
His training, as well as the infusion of Sixpath's chakra into his system, had gifted him with amazing abilities. He could sense nature energy now and take it into himself, just like Jiraiya could all those years ago. Naruto was using this to determine where these six paths were around him. Essentially, he had turned his entire body into an eye. Not too unlike the Byakugan, but instead of relying upon light to locate his opponents, he was using theirs, his own, and the world's own natural chakra to sense them. He could do it in great detail. As they came in, he dodged under one attack and struck with an attack of his own. It was so powerful that he sent it flying into the wall. He began to face each member of these six paths individually. And after a moment of deliberation, having figured out from trial and error what each pain did, he decided it was best to tackle them in a certain order, with Naraka Path being the first to be defeated as it could repair broken paths. Next up was Human Path, as he had witnessed it literally rip someone's soul out with a single touch. After that was Animal, as it could summon reinforcements in the form of massive beasts. From there, Preta, as it could siphon his energy and he would need that to fight with. And he would then take out Ashura Path, as it could offer long distance support from far away. Finally, he fought against the Diva Path, and it was Diva that seemed to be in control. It also seemed that this was the tip of the spear when it came to strength. Naruto had an issue in fighting against the repulsive forces of gravity, but considering that he could already defy gravity with flight, Naruto would be able to overcome this, hovering in the air. He would then rush down at Diva and deliver a combo of decisive blows against the path, completely incapacitating it. But Naruto wasn't stupid. He had known a Rinnegan user and was a user of the six paths himself so he at least knew that there was a seventh path. This path would be the original host, likely the one that killed Jiraiya, likely the one responsible for the death of Asuma and Gara. He would use the chakra rod to hunt down the main body, which he would find in a paper mache tree. Inside, he found a single frail man and his aide, a woman. Naruto would step in, and the final path, Nagato, would begin to speak with him. Naruto would converse with him for a while, but it became obvious that he would not spare Nagato nor his aid should she get in the way, and so she actually did. Naruto would sweep her away, plow her down like a paper person, because so she was. He came to Nagato and would finish him off. Naruto was no stranger to vengeance. Having spent as much time as he had with Sasuke, he knew that it felt good to kill your enemies. It felt good to serve justice. Pain might argue that this wasn't justice, but then again, Sasuke had taught Naruto that justice was a thing man took for himself, and Naruto had just claimed it. And with that, the battle was over. To say that Naruto wasn't put back into his cell would be the understatement of the century. Naruto had become the hero of the Hidden Leaf, saving it from destruction. A few buildings had come down and a few people had been hurt, but thanks to Naruto being there, nobody had died and so he was hailed as a hero. But that didn't make him feel much better about it. Naruto would wait for any confirmation that Sasuke was found, but nothing came up. Tsunade would attend the Five Kage Summit, and there the Five Kage would receive a threat from Tobi that there would be war unless they turned over their tailed beasts. Tsunade refused to do this, as did everyone else, and so Tobi would declare the Fourth Shinobi World War. Naruto was told that he would have to wait it out by Tsunade, but he refused this, telling her that he was strong enough to take out pain and that he was strong enough to fend for himself. He told her that without him, they might not win. He could tip the scales in their favor. And despite the fact that she really didn't want to allow him to go, she decided that it would be best, just in case the Akatsuki used the tailed beasts against them. And so they moved on to fight in the war. They would face many Ido Tensei, and it was believed that the only way to stop them was to seal it up, or help them come to terms with the actions of their life to send them to the next world. But this wasn't true. Naruto had Truth Seeker Orbs, which possessed Yin Yang Release, and with these, he could neutralize Ninjutsu entirely. And so, he could neutralize the Ido Tensei before they ever became a true threat, and this included even Madara's Ido Tensei. As they moved on to the final battle, however, they discovered that the Ten Tails was almost ready to be activated. Tobi told Naruto that they had already taken the Eight Tails, and that all they needed now was the Nine Tails. But given Naruto's strength, they believed they couldn't take it from him. But then again, they didn't need to. They had the Gold and Silver Brothers Ido Tensei. Feeding them to the Ghetto statue, they caused it to awaken as the Ten Tails. It started to rampage. But the question was, how could they control it? They needed a Rinnegan to do it, but Naruto had already killed Pain. It was then that Obito revealed Sasuke's presence. Obito explained, It wasn't hard to switch Sasuke to our side. After all, when he came to realize the truth, he couldn't stomach returning to Konoha. Naruto stood there for a moment. What truth? Obito smiled and looked at Sasuke. Why don't you tell him? Sasuke stepped forward. Itachi wasn't at fault for the deaths of the Uchiha clan. He was under orders. Konoha's orders. Naruto was stunned. It was Konoha that killed the Uchiha? Sasuke nodded. 
It was. And now I need retribution. Sasuke began to absorb the Ten Tails into himself. Obito spoke. And now, with the power of the Ten Tails, Sasuke will destroy Konoha. He will cast a light down upon the world and put them into an eternal dream. He'll bring peace, and once more, he'll restore his clan. He was confident that he had brainwashed Sasuke. Too confident. Sasuke would stab through Obito. Obito is surprised by this. Sasuke scoffed. I have no need for a dream world when I can make the real world into whatever I want. He would finish off Obito and then kill Zetsu as well. He would then turn to Naruto. I will have my revenge. Are you going to stand with me or against me? Naruto thought for a moment. Sasuke, as much as I wish I could help you find justice, you know we can't destroy the village. We can't kill our friends. I refuse. Sasuke thought about it. How about this? Sasuke said. I will not destroy the village in its entirety. I will destroy only its current leadership. I'll install you as Hokage, and then I'll destroy the leadership of all other shinobi nations. I'll force them to submit to us, and once they do, we'll create a new world without war and suffering. A world where the definition of what it means to be a shinobi has changed. Where shinobis aren't killers and warmongers, but peacekeepers. A world where every clan can be safe. Naruto thought about it. A peaceful world. Sasuke nodded. Just come with me, and we can make this world together. A world where we're both respected by the villages that wronged us. Where we can lead the world and make things the way we want them to be. Where our dreams become reality. What do you say? Naruto began to smile. And so began a new kind of war. A war where Naruto and Sasuke had to destroy the leadership of each village. Naruto attempted to spare Tsunade, as did Sasuke out of respect for her and Naruto, but the Konoha Council he would not spare. The whole world would then be subjugated under them, and through fear of retaliation, would be unified. Together, any threat that could ever rise would be put down. Teneri's attempt to drop the moon would be met with a visit from Sasuke himself, who would easily eradicate Teneri altogether and stop the threat. Momoshiki and Kinshiki would be met with overwhelming force, and the power of Sasuke and Naruto together was easily able to overcome even Ishiki Otsutsuki. And so, Naruto and Sasuke finally rested after their battles. Naruto looked out over the village and sighed. It was a bit bloody and very roundabout, but we managed to bring peace, and our dreams are fulfilled. Sasuke nodded. He had gotten his revenge and brought peace to the world, and now he and Sakura were married and already had a child. His clan was once again growing. Naruto smiled as he looked up into the sky, content with the path he had chosen. And that's the end of the video. To be perfectly honest, this is how I see it going. If Sasuke had the Rinnegan, Obito would have no reason to steal them from Pain. The only issue I really have here is the idea that Obito could completely trust Sasuke. But in all honesty, Obito could believe that he's in total control of Sasuke and underestimate him. We both know Sasuke wouldn't go for the infinite Tsukiyomi, and he'd more than likely not be fully agreeing with the Akatsuki's plans besides bringing peace. I believe we've actually seen once before the kind of world Sasuke wanted to bring, and in that official story, he takes over the world, installs his friends as regional governors, and would rule over the world and enforce peace. And there's no reason in my mind to think that this Naruto wouldn't help. After all, he did leave the village because he felt nobody cared. So in his own way, he might have actually agreed with Pain here due to how much time he had spent with Sasuke and Sasuke's toxic ideas. But anyway, that's just what I think. What do you think? Did you enjoy the video? If so, tell us in the comments. Let us know what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it, and anything you want to see happen in future videos. Remember to like, and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when we drop more content like this. Until next time, peace.